Well, good morning. It's day number 43 today, or at least I think it's day number 43. I've kind of lost track of time on this trip, but I do know that I'm in Tatla Lake, and that's way up in Canada to the northwest of Vancouver. I left Bella Coola yesterday morning, and I'm still making my way over towards Williams Lake where I can head south. I'm gonna take some pictures and walk around and show you a little bit about this place where I'm at here in Tatla Lake before I get back on the road. These mountains over here are the mountains separating me from Vancouver to the southeast of here. If you guys make it up this way to Tatla Lake, make sure you stop at the Graham Inn. I'm gonna go have a cup of coffee. You know, one of the things that I've been thinking about on this journey is how to get more people involved, how to get more local people involved along the way, because I really do enjoy meeting people and learning about the places where they live and the stories of their lives and their communities. For example, Christiana here, who just kind of showed me her, her operation here and told me a little bit about what life is like here and what it's like running this business, etc. Uh, the Graham Inn was built in 1930 by the Graham family, and then this building here was the first building in Tatla Lake. It was the roadhouse. It's one thing to meet a person on the road, and it's kind of another thing to, to, to get them to appear in front of the camera. It's something that I want to pursue and try to do a little bit more in my travel videos, and there's a couple of reasons for that. Number one, I just, I, I think it could be interesting for you guys to learn more about the places that I travel through, and in particular, places that you might visit, places like a lodge like this one where you could actually come and stay yourself and spend the night here on your travel. Now it seems like you've lived here 25 years and moved here from Germany. Yes. You must have found a, a, a love here, a love of this land or of this place. What is it that made you st stay here? Uh, the opportunity to live uh, in freedom. Nobody judges you out here the way you live as long as you're respectful to the community, to the land, to the nature. And I asked Christiana, what's the, the hardest thing about living here for herself or for the local people? And she said, financial survival. That's the, that's the hardest thing for the folks that live up here. Pretty much everyone has to do two or three things just to survive. There's no big city jobs here. There's no salaries and pensions and benefits and things like that. What an incredible person she is. She, right now, at this very moment, is waxing floors in the community school. And in addition to that, she was a farmer for many years here when she first moved here, and she did everything on the farm, all of the hard work. She pretty much did it all. And she's a hunting guide as well. There were just a couple local gentlemen here inquiring about her services as a hunting guide for a moose hunt that they want to do in September. And that's the kind of people out here that that survive, that make it, that they have to do multiple things in order to make ends meet. I don't know, I just really respect a person like that. And I was thankful for the opportunity to meet her, learn a little bit about the community that she lives in, spend the night here, get myself recharged and refreshed and ready for the next leg of my journey. And that's very similar to where I live down in Arizona. Um, a lot of people, myself included, do a few different things just to get by. And I really respect that. And I think that it's a good thing to kind of promote these places along the way and show you guys what's out there and where you can stay and where you can spend some of your money to help these folks out. We're going to go upstairs and check out the rooms. When they built it, they didn't have running water. That got added in the 70s. So it's like the European style where you share the bathroom in the yes. hallway and then you yes. have your own rooms. Yes. It does get cold here, like minus 40. It's something that I understand, you know, as a small business owner, as a, a motel owner down in Southern Arizona, I appreciate the motorcycle travelers that, that come through and spend an evening or two in our rooms and, and go out to town and go out for dinner or drinks or whatever. So you know, maybe that's something that I need to pursue. Maybe I need to incorporate more people into my videos. It's something I'm thinking about. I'd be curious to hear your thoughts if you think that's a, a good idea or you find that kind of content interesting. But like I said, the real challenge for me is sort of how to do that. You know, I need to work on my approach and work on 
meeting people and introducing myself and telling my story and, you know, basically somehow getting them to become a part of the story, getting them to feel comfortable on the camera. Well, thank you, Christiana. And if you guys come up to Tatla Lake, it's halfway between Williams Lake and Bella Coola. It would be a great way to break up that long drive or that long ride. You could stay here at the Graham Inn, get a room right on the water here, mm -hmm. a really good hot plate of food like I had last night. Come by. We will be hosting you. We'll be happy to host you. Uh, Thank you. Something that I you know, promised you in the beginning that I would talk to you about how I do a trip like this when it comes to the filmmaking. And it's not just the gear that I use and the lenses and the cameras and the technology. It's also about the, the method and the techniques. And part of that is just how to integrate with people, how to communicate, basically. It's a challenge I think I'm up for, and that might be part of part three of this, this travel journey that I'm working on. Part three is I turn the ship south and head back home to my own small business in Arizona. What a great day to be out motorcycling up here in Canada. I'm on this paved road going through the forest up here in the Chilcoat Plateau heading towards the town of Williams Lake. It has been remote and it's going to continue to be remote but perhaps a little bit less remote as I head back towards the United States. What a great morning to be on the bike. Day 42 of this adventure. And I have about a week and a half left on this journey. So plenty of room for discovery and adventure. This is a really easy, fast flowing paved road. Really fun, really enjoyable to ride on, especially because I've been riding on so many difficult dirt roads. And this is just kind of a different experience for me for a while, just to be on the pavement, riding through these beautiful farmlands. I stopped here to admire this valley down below. Not a bad place to pull over. Not a bad place at all to stop and enjoy the view despite the difficulties with my parking situation. So I was just sitting on my bike. It's on a slightly unlevel surface and because I was sitting on it, the weight was kind of up high and I leaned back and then boom, over it went. Well, that really did a number on my pannier and on my monopod here. It's kind of a, the strap is broken down below. So I only have this one bolt holding it in and now it's really a lot wobblier. So I might not be able to use this anymore. You know, this trip since day one has been an experiment on many levels, an experiment in, in gear and camping gear, an experiment in filmmaking, an experiment in my filmmaking techniques and the gear. And you know, it's just been a, it's been a learning experience and an experiment. And I've been doing this for over 20 years. So I have lots of experience already, but you know, you always want to try new things. You want to try new methods, new systems, new pieces of gear. And for me, this trip has really been an exercise and an eye opening experience in simplification. And I know that Already, motorcycle travel is already an exercise in simplifying things. You know, it's, it's a good place to practice a certain kind of minimalism because you can only carry so much on a motorcycle. And I'm guilty occasionally of trying to carry too many things and I've simplified already on this journey. I've sent some stuff home and I'm continuing to refine my system and looking for even further ways to simplify what it is that I do so that I can do it easily and smoothly. I guess what I'm saying is, you know, this has all been a work in progress and I hope that uh, you understand that and that my mistakes and learnings along the way can help give you ideas and you can benefit from some of my experience and, and things that I've, I've learned here. Does this thing work out for me? In a lot of ways, yeah, it's pretty cool. But, you know, bear in mind, this is just a, a prototype that I whipped together before I went on this trip. And if I were to redesign it, I would like to see it be able to collapse a little bit further so there's nothing sticking up. And maybe that way it would be just a little more protected, um, less visible, uh, but still useful. So, you know, version number one, you know, was a learning experience. I won't say it was a failure, but I won't say it was a complete success. 
and you know maybe I'll move on to version number two. Well you can see here I actually took it off. This monopod is pretty trashed and it's going to go into the trash because I can't use it anymore. It's kind of bent so it doesn't go down and I don't want to carry it home. Well this road continues through these rolling green hills and pastures. A great time motorcycling and a, a sense of freedom. Freedom of the open road and the freedom to set my own pace and schedule. I truly enjoy having that in my life. It's one of the most important things to me. That being said, I do have to return south and get back to my home and my business. There's a lot more adventures to be had along the way. There's a lot of country to cover between here and southern Arizona, the great American West. We're beginning a, a long descent down a steep hill. And that can mean only one thing, is that there's a river up ahead. And I believe I know which river it is, the mighty Fraser River, that valley that sends the cold Arctic air down into the Pacific Northwest. Ooh, isn't she beautiful? That is indeed quite a bridge. Well, as you can see from the sign here, we're getting to Williams Lake. Well, it feels pretty strange to be riding through a, a city with convenience stores and fast food and big box stores and giant Canadian flags off to the right. I wouldn't say it's a big city, but it's bigger than anything I've been through in a while. The sky ahead is looking a bit ominous, I must admit. I could be in for a little rainstorm and that would really be the first one of this whole trip. Well, here's a place on the side of the road called Pete's House. It says homestyle cooking and food truck. Let's check it out. Well, that's pretty cool. It's like a little roadside attraction. Yeah. Is that where you do the cooking, right inside there? Let's see, what do you got on the menu here? Sandwiches, burgers, corned beef. Well, this is Pete's and it's quite the little scene here. There's a, a food truck on the side of the road here. I just ordered a, a burger for lunch. Pete is going to come back in a little while and cook some food. He just took off in his quad because he didn't think there were going to be any customers. And then I showed up. Just so you know, we're just south of Williams Lake, maybe 15 miles or so. Definitely want to check this place out. So how long has this place been here? Uh, only about a year and a half now. A year and a half, yeah, okay. Yeah, we opened uh, last year in August, actually. We also do uh, Friday night specials for Chinese food. Friday night Chinese food. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we normally have chicken chow mein, sweet and sour pork, ginger beef. You get them. Uh, locals and a lot of travelers during the summer. And winter, mostly just locals. <laughs> we've had people all the way from Germany, France, every, we've had tree planters come through. This is really the first time that I've seen rain on this whole trip other than day number one. When I left Arizona the very first day, I had to put my rain gear on. And for 42 days now, it's been dry and it's been sunny, but not today. Pete just got in from his ride on his ATV. He, he's going to hook up the generator because they lost power here. We'll pull the generator out and plug it in and we'll get you your burger and fries. Okay. <laughs> Got to keep the business open for folks like me that come on down the road looking for a, a hot meal and a place to get out of the rain. I'm a Red Seal chef by trade and I've uh, been doing this for uh, 30 years and uh, figured, hey, why not? Uh, do different creations out of the food truck. And what's your specialty? What do you make here? We do Chinese food Friday nights. Uh, we do uh, Mexican food. We do Italian food. We do, you know, we keep our milkshakes and burger people happy and uh, more or less it's, it's, it's the thing. Yeah. Well, the sun has come back out. Pete's place is basking in the glory of that golden sunshine. But if you're in this neck of the woods, you're looking for a place to grab a bite to eat while you're out riding, stop at Pete's. Come on down for good food, good times, nice place to sit down. Right on. Cheers. Good yeah, to good to meet you. Absolutely. I just love these kinds of places. This is what I love about travel and motorcycle travel and being on the road is finding these little gems, these little gems that, that just you don't know about. And that's what, that's what I like the most is making discoveries. I found it by just keeping my eyes open, being in tune with my surroundings. And I saw this sign on the side of the road and the next thing I know, I'm down here eating a hamburger with Pete and this lovely lady in the middle of a rainstorm. And now the rain is gone. 
and it's beautiful. I'm gonna have a great evening of riding, so I'm gonna saddle up and hit the road. We're heading east towards Highway 5, which, should you take it to the north, would lead to Jasper. We're gonna head south. Beautiful stretch of road winding through the woodlands with forested lake shores. Well, I just stopped here on the side of the road at this little turnout, this rest area, to take in the view of this beautiful lake and take a pause from the afternoon ride. This is Highway 24. It's known as the Fishing Highway. There's over 100 lakes right here in this little area. And fishing is a really big deal. Fishing derbies, along with rodeos and mud drags, according to the information provided here. But for me, it's just a, a chance to take an afternoon break on the side of the road and admire the scenery and give you a little update as to where I am. up into the forest now, hoping to find a place to camp somewhere this evening that's nice and scenic, perhaps with a lake. I don't know if that's too much to ask for, but that's what I'm looking for at this point. I just stopped at the store and got supplies for the night. I've got gas and water. We'll see what we can find here. On this forest road, really heading into the backcountry, seeing a lot of wildlife out here. I saw a giant moose running right on the road next to me. That was pretty cool. I've seen a couple other things just dart off into the woods. I'm not sure what they were, but what a beautiful ride in the forest. These just golden rays of late, late sun. Lots of clouds in the sky. It's almost as if it were on the, the edge of rain or like after a good rainfall. Well, what a day of it. Today was another really good day, and I found a really good place to camp tonight. Look at this. Got the fire going already. I just rolled in right before sundown. And I'm gonna get my camp all set up here. I'm gonna pitch my tent right here next to the fire, next to the lake. This is some kind of a, a forest recreation site. And there's absolutely no one out here. I am the only one up in the woods tonight. I'm gonna finish setting up camp, have a glass of wine, and enjoy the last light of the day here. So here I am, the only one up here in the forest with the moose and the mosquitoes. But I have Ben's bug spray, so I'm not doing too bad. Thank you, Ben, whoever you are. I'm gonna tend to the fire, relax, enjoy the rest of the evening, and wake up here in the morning and start over. I hope that you guys have really enjoyed this one as much as I have. And encourage you to come back for more in the future. Cheers. <laughs>